can uh, buy reeds from me. Uh, I'm, I'm making reeds and selling them online at pierroyobo.com, which is uh, one of my sites. And also, they're for sale on eBay. And they're reeds just like this, just like the ones I play. And they, they sound great and they feel great. So now I'm going to show you how to adjust an uh, instrument that has skin pads. A little different because the the uh, the feeling that you get between the cork and the skin is is different than cork and cork. And what that I mean by that is the cork, the skin, excuse me, is much lighter than the cork. The cork is strong and skin is lighter, but not to the point where it's you know falling off kind of light, but David Tiedelbaum once told me that sometimes he over tightens and then backs it off until he finds it a comfortable uh, place for it and that's also a good idea I've done that also for the time being though I'll just show you these relationships now it's hard of course to show you how much I'm pulling but you have to do it a few times just to get the feeling for it it's important to keep an eye on these things and I said earlier that sometimes you know the instrument will get away from you and uh, you show up one day to rehearsal and it's not working well sometimes it's not your reeds sometimes it's the instrument this is also very strong and it should be and also you want if you do this trill between the F sharp and the G flat this one right here when I press this key G flat key see how that comes up but you want it to close also. Otherwise you won't be able to play your trill. And that's really qu not quite enough. But you know what, I'm going to leave it alone. And then we have these pads down here. This is also critical, this E-pad. Got to be strong. It's, it's, it's got to be very strong. And if it isn't, you have to make it that way. This is definitely lighter. This is strong. If this E is not strong, if it's not closing, You're going to have problems down here in the bottom register. It's just not going to be good. This can be light, you see, because you can tighten it with this if you need B, right, with the D. But if it's light for the E, it's fine. The note will speak as so long as this is strong. This E is strong. And you feel that? And I'm not pushing hard, but it's there. See that? That's lighter is much stronger okay and so is this D this has to be strong also of course we have our fork def resonance key let's get into that and then you press the E press the D and then you press the E and it should be light this should not bind however if you're having problems with the low D you can tighten this somewhat and you know what I think I'm going to just a hair what I mean by a hair I mean a hair I mean yeah, I'm going to leave that alone. This F is probably okay. C's got to be strong. And it is. More so than the E flat. Remember this relationship we had before. Yeah, it's okay. It's light, but it does grab. If it doesn't grab at all, you'll have to tighten this screw right here. See this screw? You'll have to tighten this one. Now for the uh, Tombow relationship here. We've got the C sharp. Some would say not. Uh, and that, it is rather light. But then so is that. That's not so strong because we're dealing with skin. And skin isn't, it doesn't, doesn't grab like the cork does. And I think that's all right. I could play tombow and find out. And then of course the B flat. And this is a good relationship down there. I don't know if you caught that. Um, so let me see. Let's try this. So this oboe's in pretty good shape. It's um, adjusted well. This yeah. bridge key here, key here. This should have a little room. This key here should be a little freer, okay? Should move up and down. That's okay. You don't want it tight. You want it to be free. Um, and you do that by adjusting this screw right here. You can turn this down a little bit. 
and that goes for the Loray. This, this bridge key, you want it to be a little loose, not too tight, not too binding. And if it isn't, then we can turn this a hair, which I think I will. You don't want that to bind. Mostly, let's see, there's one other thing I want to talk about, and that's your high C sharp. Sometimes people have play a C sharp and it's way up there. And if this C key, you see how this is right here? It's got this little nut, this screw down here, and this screw turns, closes your E key in the F-sharp hole. Now, if you're pressing this, you're pressing the C key and it's not pushing down on this E, because you see you're not playing the C, you're playing this, the F-sharp key. If it's not pressing down, that C-sharp upstairs is going to be very high. That's something you want to avoid. And fortunately, this one is closing. It could close a little more. But that's important. If your C-sharp is high, you're going to have to turn this screw here just a hair so that this can be this can grab a little more what is it Bartok Concerto for Orchestra you have that thing it's real important right so that C sharp has doesn't want it to be too high or the flute player will have a bird let's make sure that's grabbing and that's real important. This is coming down nice and this is good. So as far as the third octave key, I never use it. I actually just bind it all the way. I think that's about it for now. If you get any questions, send them my way. Mm -hmm.